welcome on the Dharma journey, Jord. Thank you. Jord is my partner in crime, literally. <laughs> He's upstairs right now and I'm downstairs in our house and we're recording this episode. This is going to be the 30th episode, which is really cool that the Dharma journey has 30 episodes now. And yeah, I really wanted to come on and talk a little bit about values because it's a big part of your work. It's been a big part of our relationship in terms of finding that midway of respecting each and each other's values, even if they are different from our values that we've been brought up with. And I think that's a topic I definitely want to speak about is how we can respect one another's boundaries and, and really kind of like where our values come from, how they shape us from our parents, cultural, social belief system. And if, you know, when we, as we get adults, then they slightly change because what we were, I guess, programmed with might not necessarily be our truth. So that would be something if you guys are listening and you're like, ah, I don't know what my values are. I hope you can, in this in this uh, podcast, take away a little bit more depth about the values and how they shape um, everything we do and, and why sometimes we have this internal conflict in our lives and our relationships and our business. So first of all, I would love to know, Jord, what is the change that you wish to see in this world and how are you contributing to that change mm, beautiful thanks uh first of all congratulations on the 30th podcast like so super cool to see you growing and um, to see your podcast growing and, and like where this is going and i'm excited to be here again and then to continue contributing so thank you um the change that i wish to see in this world like whenever someone asks me that question i just think of my children like what do my children and eventually our children of course um what are they going to grow up with what are they going to see who are their role models and i what i wish is, is that their role models are are performing and leading from a place of authenticity and wholeness it's like it's, they, they're still performing they're still achieving their, their goals but they do it in a way that they can also live like a deeply fulfilling life, that they can feel connected and alive in the present moment. And that is the role model that I wish to be for my children. And that is something that I wish to cultivate among other people as well. It's, it's, I think it is, it is the solution to, to actualizing our own potential, our human potential, um, that makes us better leaders, that makes us better partners, and that makes us better parents to our children and that will contribute to a better more united world um, as we make the most of our individual journeys so i think that captures the mission that i'm on and and what it takes is is for me to uh, yeah basically expose the beliefs and the survival mechanisms that we've developed that are separating us from from who we are and what we have the potential to be beautiful and do you feel that many of us are experiencing that form of separation or that form of not fully feeling in alignment or fully feeling authentic because we are somewhere out of alignment with our values or we just don't know what they fully are yet what's our values and what's our parents values they might be a little bit different i, I think most people are unaware of their values um e even if they say they are aware because they've, they've done some sort of workshop and they came up with a few words like, oh, kindness, creativity, performance, whatsoever, uh, with all the respect, of course, but there's still no, no, no real awareness of, of what those words actually mean and how you can embody them. So how you can really start showing up. But most of all, which beliefs and which coping mechanisms are holding them back from living in alignment with those values. So what I see in my work and just around me in the world is that that well, people who do, who do some of the work that they have some sort of idea of their values, like the words that I just mentioned, like could be kindness, could be sovereignty, could be performance. For other people, it might be power or whatsoever. Um, but they're just words. They're, they're em empty vessels, hulses, um, which makes it, it almost impossible to live in alignment with them. And, and, that, and that in the end is the real deal. It's not just knowing a word or a definition is being able to live in alignment with them, like having that capacity. Um, and yeah, that's a, that's a real big challenge. And not many people, um, not many people have that awareness and have that capacity yet. 
And do you feel that, um, first of all, I would love to just kind of unwind because I remember our first relationship, we went to Matcha Cafe, one of our friends' <laughs> cafes. I think we, it was like one of our first dates and you got this piece of paper out for me and you started, I was in a bit of a transition in my life and had no clue what I was going to do and thankfully that you came into my life at just the right time, um, about three years ago now and you started to, to kind of do a, a pyramid and I was like oh god what, what am I getting myself in for and you wish you were kind of guiding me through a little bit of the process you do in in your work obviously it's definitely evolved since you know three years ago but I had no clue what my values were and still kind of they're you know I feel like they are not fully cemented yet but I feel that a lot of people don't know what they what they actually are and I, I don't I didn't know what they were until you express you know your values and maybe you can share mm. a little bit about what values are and how they are shaped and maybe you could share your values and why they're so important to you mm -hmm. yeah um so we all have values whether we are aware of them or not like um and i uh, yeah my definition of values is it's, it's basically they are the things that are important to us um beyond our basic human needs so we have our basic human needs like the maslow pyramid with with our uh, with our need for safety our need for love and belonging our need for self-esteem so to be respected by others and then like the need for growth for self-actualization and that last need that self-actualization i think that's where we tap into our values is, is where we start thinking hey what is it, what is important for us in order to feel satisfied but also in order to thrive in life um, so the basic needs are, are really about surviving and I see values as, as, as soon as we become aware of them and they align with us as an opportunity to try. So they, as long as we live in alignment with them, we can, can really start thriving. Um, and yeah, how do we develop them? Like, like that's a very subconscious process through our upbringing, through our environment. First of all, of course, through our caretakers, which can be our, our parents or people that have taken care of us um through their behaviors they, they they show what what is important and what is not and what they accept and what they don't accept what they respect and what they don't respect and um, and we yeah we naturally um ad adopt those values and it's not just our parents because the parents are part of a social system that we can also call our culture and in that culture we have societies that all have their 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 own values and I think that is already the beautiful part for the people that moved abroad, that have traveled, is that that's when you start notice, noticing, hey, I am clashing. Like, get someone from the Netherlands or from Sweden or, or from Germany um, to go for lunch with someone from Italy or Spain. Well, the German or the Dutch guy, he shows up on time. Like, one o'clock is one o'clock. Probably he, he is early because that's what they value, that that's in their culture. That's mm -hmm. what they've learned. Whereas the Italian guy shows up 10 minutes late, which is still early for them and they have no clue. And that's how you can see where you start like clashing and can, can create conflict. And that's just a same, simple example. Like for us as well, when we started dating, um, we come from such different backgrounds and it's very interesting to see, um, yeah, that that people with separate, with different values can live together and actually have a very beautiful and healthy relationship as long as they are aware of it and can express them. So that we can choose to honor our own values and respect the ones of, of someone else. And maybe you can share your values. And I remember when I you shared one value, I didn't even know what the word integrity meant. I was like, I was like, what does integrity mean? I had to Google it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. Share like dissect. Maybe you can just dissect your values and how how that process of living in alignment with your values looks like for you. Well, I, that, that has been a process. And I think one of the reasons why I'm so clear on my values is that I've been living uh, in conflict with my values for a very, very long time. Um, because I was relying on a set of junk values and I, I call junk values. Um, those are the values that neglect our basic needs. And I was just sharing what, what are values. They are the things that are important to us once we've met our basic needs. So that is kind of interesting because that means when we have junk values that neglect our basic needs, we never really get to satisfy and honor 
our true values because we're always focused on satisfying our basic needs. And well, we well we know, and maybe other people know, is that when when we fail to meet our basic needs, whether it's perceived or, or actual, um, we behave quite irrational and selfish, and we we don't even get to fulfill our or we don't even get to honor our values. Um, so yeah, that's what, what happened to me. And obviously like, you know, my story that led to a breakdown and the breakdown led to my, to my yeah, journey of self-discovery and to who I've become right now. Um, and got me very clear on my values and, and same as the Maslow hierarchy, I, I created a value pyramid for myself to be super clear. Okay. Hey, what are my values and which are the most important ones? And at the bottom of my, my pyramid, you will find the value. I can call it freedom. I can call it authenticity. I call it sovereignty, but it, it's really about the freedom to be myself. It is about feeling extremely healthy, like really connected to my life force uh, so that I have the energy to do whatever I want. So that means if that's at the bottom of, of my pyramid that I will never allow or tolerate something in my life that threatens my authenticity my freedom my vitality so that is just the bottom like and that, that is like it's super clear it's in my work it's in my relationship obviously it can happen that i that i get into a situation where i'm in conflict if it's for a day it's fine if it's for a longer period of time i can make a decision hey this is not for me it's where i can set my boundaries then when i move up in the pyramid i go to integrity um which is a lot about like my interpersonal relationships it's, it's what i what i value and which for me is all about um being able to trust someone's words and actions um, um i've coped with a lot of bullshit in my life and i just don't want it anymore it it sabotages my my peace my my well-being and for me in order to thrive whether it's in a relationship um, or in business i just want to be able to trust people um, that's that's like fundamental once i have those two so once i have my freedom i have my integrity that's when i when i feel like when i feel safe when i feel myself then i can move into curiosity curiosity is such a big thing for me like being able to ask questions to explore to learn learn more to hang around with open-minded people to seek disconfirming evidence on something that i believe very strongly in um to explore new ways of living, to explore new countries, whatever. That's like the curiosity part that, that's super important. For me, that leads to more understanding, more compassion, um, more meaning, more impact. And when I have all those things, I move into the next one, which is for me, excellence, which is a lot about also my need for growth, for performance, for results. But everything I do, I do with excellence. Like I, that's like, for me, it's the road to mastery. I only do things like it, it um it's like it's it's his reference point for me this this it guides me to to be very clear on my decisions so that whenever i choose to do something that i go all in there and don't do half as work because i think my time is too valuable i know like one day it's all gonna end so whatever i touch i want to fully touch it not not half so that's my one for excellence and the last one is joy um i just yeah just mentioned like one day it's all gonna end and on that journey of of growth, of creating, of being myself, I, I also truly want to uh, enjoy life, and I think that's one of the most spiritual things we can do is like is like to actually be alive because we can get so caught up, or I, at least I I I was could get so caught up in in self improvement and performing and and you name it, and um, yeah, that that last one is just a reminder to. Um, invite in some or bring in some joy and invite in some joy and, and some lightness yeah I, I, I think we all need to remember that sometimes we forget we get so caught up in the doing and um, it's been a big part of our practice and you know like going to the beach and leaving our phone and not having like we always be switched on and that was like something that you really you know, taught me to, to be more present and not be always in the mind and, and be connected to, to the actual place where you're at and the environment and the people. And I think that's something that, yeah, I think when we're, like you said, we, when we can't meet our basic needs or we're thinking about work or maybe something stressing us, 
you know, our immediate attention goes to that and we kind of lose sight of the things that really matter to us because we're in that mm-hmm. survival kind of mechanism, those coping mechanisms um, that protect us, but they don't allow for this deeper connection and deeper fulfillment in life um, when we're operating on that kind of, on that, yeah, on that energy. And for, for your clients that you work with and, and you know, and just in general, the stuff that you've experienced, what happens when people keep bumping in to their values or they're basically out of alignment with their values they're having this internal conflict they don't know why and it's due to being out of alignment with their value but they haven't quite understood that that's what it is so maybe you can share some insights about the inner conflict that well, we experience. It, 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 it is really just a, it's all around a question like a lot of clients that come to me is like where to go next and and they're basically exhausted because they've been working hard and and they've been they thought that, that they were doing the right thing and and i call it the first mountain syndrome it's like walking up that mountain and then standing at the top of the mountain and, and not not seeing that view that someone promised you um and some people keep walking up that same mountain over and over again hoping that once they come up they, they are in the promised land and I think that that's, that's what we feel is like at a certain, we reach a certain point where, where we're just like uns- unsure about which decisions are right for us. And we just, we know deep down, like, like, okay, hey, I can continue doing the same thing, but it's going to lead to the same result. And these results are just, are not fulfilling me. Um, and that's, that's a nice way of saying it because deep down it, it, it leads to, eventually leads to burnout or depression. Um, another question that comes up is, is okay, um, why am I not more confident? Or why am I not more happy at this point? So those are questions that come up that show that there's a, that there's a conflict. And for a very long time, it, it's human, like the first, stage of ch- the first stage of change is denial. And in that denial stage, we focus our um, attention externally and we project it on other things so that we don't have to take responsibility ourselves. But as I said, with the first mountain syndrome, if we've walked up that mountain a couple of times, then like the same thing continues to happen and we become aware that it might not be the external environment, but something inside of us. And that is the moment that people are actually gonna change. That's the moment where they get out of denial and go more into resistance and turn their focus from the external world into the internal world and start asking indeed that question, hey, why am I not more confident? Why am I not more happy? If these decisions don't lead to fulfillment, happiness, or whatever I am after, then which decision will lead to that? Yeah, and I think um, just touching in that part, I feel like we get to a point in our life where we keep hitting the same hurdle. And I think I see it with my clients as and they still keep getting the reoccurring health issue. Maybe it's digestion, skin, um, mm. fatigue, you know, and it, maybe then it becomes a headache or reproductive issue. And it's like, sometimes we have to go through a little bit of, I guess, suffering or a little bit of, um, you know, smack in the face and it has to get a little bit harder to, for us to kind of think, okay, something deeply needs to change. Like I've, I've, I've gone on a holiday or I've, you know, I've done a, you know, a boot camp or I've done some form of self-development work course, but it's not, it hasn't really led to that behavioral change I'm looking at. And obviously that's something that you really master is behavioral change. Why do you feel like it's so hard for people to, to act upon their values in an alignment way and then make those you know changes to to really step forward into that potential okay let's 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 start at the beginning of this podcast like let's go back to to my mission is simply because of lack of role models and so I remember after my um after my breakdown of my health and I just for me that was like my breaking point and I decided I'm never going back to my old life I'm going to find a new way a different way I don't know how it's like a blank page and I decided to to spend some time in Bali never decided to go live here but for me that was like I got to know people that were li- that were living their lives in such a different way than I've had ever seen before mm-hmm. like they were running their businesses we 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 both know Manengo for example 
and he is like super successful. And at the end of the day, he invites me for a coconut uh, on the beach. And in the morning, I saw him running on the beach or going for a swim. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! All these t- all these things can go go together. Mm. Um, which was just eye opening. So sometimes, sometimes it's just a new perspective, like a role model that shows you that life can be lived in a different way. Yeah, it can be that easy. Um, but when we don't have those role models and we live in a society where everybody is doing the same thing and also where it is, where it is really important to do the same thing because it gets you the likes and acceptance of other people. And if you do something different, they start judging you. Um, that makes it very scary for people to step out of it. And I think that's like a second element. And the third element is that when life is good enough, we don't change. Yeah. If there's not enough pain, like, Pain is necessary. Pain is the greatest motivator for change. And in our society, there is a lot of pain, but there are also a lot of ways to suppress that pain. Mm. Like there's so much convenience around us. There's so much distraction from shopping to social media to whatsoever that we don't really have to experience that pain. We can stay away from it. Um, So until we are ready to face that pain, then we're going to change. And I'd like there, there are two separate things. There's pain and suffering. And I think pain is necessary and suffering is very unnecessary. But as long as we keep denying and, and, and suppressing that pain, we have to face suffering at a certain point. Mm, yeah, we have to eventually smell the roses. And I think my teacher, Rod, says, he, I've said this quite a few times, like, Life is more than prepared to teach you your lessons in their gentle forms. But if you're not prepared to listen, life is more than prepared to teach you in forever ending hardship. And I, I really yeah. believe that. It's like if we can't digest our life experiences and turn it into wisdom, we're going to keep getting digestive issues physically, mentally. Like we're going to keep coming up against that wall and blockages. And I know I've had that many moments in my life. You know, it's not like we're not going to come across that. It's just if we can zoom out get a higher perspective, whether it be, you know, with a role model, with a coach or, you know, through another way that suits our individual needs. Um, and like you said, like since meeting you and like learning more about values and integrity and the kind of the way that you've been brought up and compared to the way I've been brought up, it's really shifted the way I, um, yeah, the my own experiences in life and my own desire for more authentic connection. And I think it's really yeah it really fascinates me to to be with someone that is so in alignment with their values because I never really we obviously had values growing up um you know and they they were important but I think because of like other things going on it wasn't the most important and I think you know in relationships I know for us we we've definitely come across a lot of uh power struggles in our relationships and we've had these like Oh, really? Young values, yeah. <laughs> These young <laughs> values, I know, just to lighten up a bit, you know. Um, and I definitely think that I've learned a lot, you know, just I'm trying to think of an example, but um, I think there's been a, a big one, even just the way that we like to operate and the way that, um, you know, we're coming from different worlds. But we've actually had to merge our... Um, our our worlds together and really find a balance and I think that's something really important I think maybe people listening that are in relationships that maybe are coming from different backgrounds cultural social um is that something you see with your clients as well like people coming from completely different backgrounds and having to find a a balance or a, a respect for each other's values even if they don't align. yeah and I and I, I, I it's something I recommend like I would say to every to every teenager go fucking travel go explore the world go spend some time in in different cultures spend time with different people um because it will test your values it will bring them up it will show you what's important to you and what's not it will show you it will also make you curious about different ways maybe you see like like i just said maybe you get engaged in a way of life you're like wow that's interesting like for me living here in bali and being part of this culture has opened my eyes in, in terms of like their sense of community, something that I've never seen in our Western society and that will forever live in me mm. because it's so beautiful. So th- yeah, um, 
a super important part is to, to just expose yourself to new experiences. And that is already like, if, if we go back to those stages of change, like as long as we continue to live in denial. So mm. we blame our environment. We're, we blame our envi environment for our unhappiness or we're suppressing it through all sorts of means then nothing is going to change because we're focused on the external world and we're holding on to our past beliefs very strongly. And we think that life cannot be lived in a different way. And once we go through that process, and that is the process of like pain, something needs that something needs to start burning. Like so that you, you start to expose yourself to something new. Um, and from there on, like when, when you start to explore new ways, that's when the process is already starting. And that's something you can do for yourself. Um, but most people wait until it's obviously when it's too late and when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then with the, and that leads to, you know, a kind of a, a, a depletion or a kind of a freeze mode and we feel very helpless and we feel stuck. and maybe we haven't got the support that we need in that moment. And um, yeah, it can be really challenging. I think for, for many people that get to that block in the road and they just don't know where to overcome, they don't know how to move through it. Um, well, it's going back again, what I said, it, it, it's the lack of, of role models of, of, uh, yeah. in our environment that show us a, a different way. Secondly, it is values are, are in, some way they are a luxury good because as long as we don't meet our basic needs so as long as we're still busy to get the love and acceptance and the approval of our environment yeah good luck with your with your values around authenticity and sovereignty because you're going to do exactly what other people want you to do yeah so as long as we're as we're trying to get our basic needs met like obviously we're not going to meet our uh, our values and that's the same for like self-esteem. If, if we feel insignificant and we're still super busy trying to prove our worth um, to people in order to feel admired and respected. Mm. Um, yeah, that's then, your focus is, then your focus is still outwards on other people rather than inwards on what is important to me. I think that's definitely, it was a question actually saying, how can your values help you embody your worth or your authentic expression? Um, which I think you've really helped me with. I think since my business shift, like growing um, in the last year, like quite quickly doing something completely new. And obviously you were giving me this like perspective of like, oh, I can lit work online. And like, I'd never had that growing up because my parent, like my dad was not in the picture. My mom was, you know, solo parent and didn't really have much, you know, it was mainly providing for us as much as she could, but I didn't really have that, that figure of like, career and, and and following something that you're passionate about and since meeting you that's something that really shaped me and and but I definitely felt like I got, fell into that trap like that we all do is like wanting to be liked seen accepted and and that kind of led to you know not fully um oh you know finding your authentic expression I think that takes time especially when you're your your branding is yourself and your business is yourself and you you, you know you kind of have to create a brand or a business that's based on you know your values and I think that's been something that has really helped me is like okay what's important to me what's the mission that I want to help people with and um, I definitely didn't know that or even have the idea that that was possible before meeting you yeah. and seeing you kind of influence me in my process of growth and change. Mm -hmm. oh thank you um yeah and I think um a big part of like the yoga like obviously a lot of yogis listening they you know we have the yamas and niyamas which are codes of conduct like non-stealing non-violence truthfulness satya like there's like we do have specific values and um to live a kind of yogic life and I think that's really important to abide by because I think for me, when I have seen with my clients or myself, if we are in conflict with those um, desires or values or we, we, we 
it's like we keep bumping into the same thing until we learn the lesson and like I said before it's like the lesson's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until we eventually have to go through a bit of pain or a bit of suffering to hopefully change our change our internal state to change our external state mm-hmm. and what would you say out of the clients that you work with and that come to you what would you say a value that is quite strong for most people that is kind of throughout everyone that has a similar sense of the value that most people have? Uh, good question. Like, it's quite interesting is to see is that, that most of the clients come up with similar values, um, which obviously makes sense because we're all human and we're, we're, we're not very different from each other. Like when it comes to our human needs, they're actually all, they're the same. Um, our, our values may differ a little bit based on our upbringing and like the society that we grew up in and stuff and the culture. Um, but I think the biggest shift that I see in my clients is when they walk in, um, they have been prioritizing um, growth, power, money, recognition, acknowledgement. Um, obviously, and, and, and those, and I call them junk values. Because if you put those values first, you will neglect your basic needs. And it is because of the belief, and again, I call it the first mountain syndrome. If you're going to be X, Y, Z powerful, then you will be safe or then you will be liked and accepted. So it's because of a certain belief around those values that we need those values in order to be worthy, in order to be accepted, in order to be important, whatever. Um, and so the big shift that happens is, is the rediscovery of actually, hey, what is at the bottom of my pyramid? What, what does truly matter to me? What do I need to honor to be at my best, to not just survive, to truly thrive in my life? And yeah, um, I think it's fair to say there's like no argument that at the bottom of that is just personal freedom, authenticity, wholeness, groundedness, vitality. Um, because nobody can perform in the long run, like sustained performance, if they sacrifice on their authenticity. That's a ticking time on. The same if you sacrifice on your health, like as an entrepreneur, like, uh, oh, I can sleep four hours a night. Yeah, you can for a year, do it for five years, see what's left of you. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really rec- reclaiming those lo- like those base values. Um, which is comes often with, with breaking like very serious beliefs and then survival patterns from the past in order to live in alignment with them. And the other one is indeed around um, whether you call it integrity or trust or respect or just connection um, is putting that connection part before something else comes, before growth, before excellence, before mastery, before performance, before results. Otherwise, we, we continue living in that culture where we prioritize profit over people or mm. performance over people. And that all comes from that belief that we need to have a certain amount of money, power, blah, blah, blah in order to be loved or in order to be important or in order to be safe. Mm. But what we really seek, like at the bottom, what we're all seeking for, like at the root of all trauma, is this connection. Mm. So it's putting that piece of connection back into the pyramid. And I truly believe, and that's my way of, of, of teaching the values is that your values are, are, are also reflecting your basic human needs. Yeah. Like living in alignment with your values means like living in alignment with your human needs times 10. It's not that basic level of love and belonging. No, it's truly mastering it, truly, like that you truly feel that you belong in a certain community, that you truly feel loved and accepted for who you are, not for what you do. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, yeah, so that's, that's the big shift. And like I call them, I call those two the base values. So that's where, where most of the work needs to be done around, like, Coming up with those words is just one, but then being able to articulate what those words mean in a specific area of your life. So what does it mean to honor 
your value of sovereignty or authenticity in your business? What does that look like? And that is what you just talked about, like the code of conduct. Like it's knowing exactly when you live in alignment with that value. And when you know that, it becomes very easy to make decisions for yourself. You don't have that. In fact, it becomes harder. It becomes really difficult to not make those decisions because you then you become aware that you're betraying yourself. Yeah. Are you guys betraying yourself? <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. No, I think I've, I've definitely seen that in my life, in my business, where I, I didn't realize that I was out of alignment. Maybe I was projecting or being judgmental on people and, and it was actually coming from my own inner place of lack and desire for connection, but didn't know how to fully um, receive the connection because I was so afraid of the connection because of our own experiences in the past where, you know, I've potentially been um you know had disconnection and it's been you know you know a, a painful experience so we somehow block those those desires for belonging and connection i think that's a big part of what we're you know trying to do here is just like build this community online and, and connect and obviously you're going to be doing trips in peru hopefully in september um your know, expedition and i obviously do my women's circles every week and just really like you know, I think a big part of the safety is like that relationship, that space to feel yourself and to express yourself and, and, and yeah, you're not, you don't have to be anyone else. You can just really, um, love being yourself and growing into that, that version of you. And as you, um, expand your own potential, I, I believe that your capacity to connect with people and have compassion for people and for yourself is greater. And that's really, I think the medicine that I try to to embody and, and you know and share is how mm. can I connect more and, and be in alignment with my authentic true self so I can share that with the world in, in a beautiful loving way and I think that's something that you've really I think if you, yeah if you if you want my opinion on that like and and the reason I want to share it is because I think it's really important because so many people are focused on teaching stuff mm. and it's not in teaching it's in, in, a, in an embodiment. Like if you are around someone that moves through life from a place of authenticity and wholeness, you will change. That person doesn't have to teach you anything at all. And so many people are so busy gathering all this knowledge around it, but it's actually about owning it. It's, it's about the embodiment. And um, yeah, that's something that, um, that I focus on a lot and that I believe is truly important. And if we wish to make a change in this world if we wish to impact people's life if it's really through our own embodiment and how can we start that process of embodiment by reclaiming our authenticity and that is a journey it's, it's a super scary journey um, and it's the fundamental piece to the connection that we seek because it's still the question like why do we sacrifice ourselves so much in relationships and work? What is, the, what is the motivation there? And in the end, the motivation is to be, to feel connected, to feel loved and to feel belonged. And the only way to feel that you truly, that you're truly loved and that you truly belong is you, when you can be fully you. That's this beautiful saying like, <clears throat> To be fully loved, you must be fully revealed. The light and the dark. The light and the dark. Yeah. And so that is the process of like, um, of unpacking basically who that authentic self is. And I, I love the question from, from Gabor Mate is like, who am I if I'm not the person I've taken myself to be? Say again. Who am I if I'm not the person I've taken myself to be? Who I've perceived to be. Who I've taken myself to be. That's how God would say. So if you want to make perceived, then it's perceived. But yeah, for me, it was like that. I, that question came to me when I was in the hospital um, uh, almost four years ago. Like that was like so clear, like the end of me being the extreme entrepreneur. But at the same time, it came with the question like, okay, hey, for the past... I don't know, 
15 years or so I've been like attaching to like being the best performance being the cool kid the extreme entrepreneur and like if I'm not the extreme entrepreneur who am I and how do I wish to show up and that that's the journey of exploration and then just yeah exploring and and in the end defining and articulating who that person is and how he shows up and how he wants to be treated and how he treats other people. Yeah, I'm getting really clear on that. And I, I, I really do feel like that though, when you do embody yourself and your, your own values and you, you live with people and you connect with people and you attract experiences into your life and people into your life that are in alignment with that. And, um, and that's where the, 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 I think the true healing for me has taken place. And for others that I know is, is really, is building that safe container of relationships where we can express ourselves and not feel ashamed to, you know, or we, we can fully be naked, you know? And I think that's what so many of us want when we can drop the mask, the persona of who we are on Instagram, or who we are in our workforce or who we are with, you know, certain people, you know, and we can just kind of, let that guard down and, and and trust that we're safe and that we're loved and we you know have more joy and create more meaning in our life which is what we're all here to do is, is how can we suffer less and how can we have find more purpose and and live more mm -hmm. well and, and and the scary thing they're going back to the connection piece so we long for connection and what we have to go through is a process of disconnection false disconnection because we will lose certain people you said you just mentioned like how beautiful it is to create these containers where you can shamelessly express yourself i love it but the first process is to get out of the containers where you cannot do it where it's not safe to be you in england <laughs> no, kidding. well in england for where wherever people are but it's just get the fuck out of those containers like get the fuck out of of circles where you cannot be yourself Ooh. Like, yeah, you can start with like expressing boundaries, but some people are just not going to accept it. Like if I go back to that city startup culture in Amsterdam, like it's, it would be, it would be ruthless. It would be brutal. Um, mm. And I could have the desire to change that, but that would be like pushing, pushing the river or to trying to move a mountain. So in order for me to live a happier and more fulfilled life, to be more in alignment with myself, I have to get myself out of that environment yeah well I even like you know the fact that you you really do honor you know your need for freedom and integrity and I've seen that in your life where you've taken yourself out of a situation like a circle or a friendship or a group and you just knew like you had that intuition and I've had I, I think it's coming closer to me I, I've had I've always been scared of that rejection so for me like taking myself out of a group or a friendship has always been a bit like, oh, you know, if you just don't feel like it aligns anymore. Um, but you've always shown me that, that you have to honor that intuition. Otherwise it's, it's you know, you're going to get that smack in the face if you don't, you know? Um, and yeah, I definitely, since being with you, I've definitely, I think I've learned that and um, still continue to learn that too as well. Definitely. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's just an important reminder for people is that, um, it's more lonely in a group where you cannot be yourself than it is to be on your own feeling at peace with, with yourself. I hope. And, and, that, and that is something, yeah, like I had to learn it the hard way. And I, I often say like when people ask for my story, like I've been extremely lucky with just burning out literally to to the ground like with like nervous system breakdown spending three weeks in quarantine in the hospital like spending a year in recovery um with myself and that showed me or that forced me to be okay with myself and once you become okay with yourself and once you lose a lot of people because you're in my case because i was not that extreme entrepreneur any, anymore you become so extremely powerful because they don't have any power over you like, and that is, that is mo moving forward from the place of wholeness. Mm. Like, is, is it actually adding something to my life? Is it enriching my life? No. Then why, why spend time there? 
Yeah, I mean, so many of us, like, as we get older, I feel like it's it's quality, not quantity, where whereas we're growing up, it's definitely quantity over quality because mm. we haven't really found our, we, you know, we're in that process of learning and developing and trial and error. And I, I felt so disconnected growing up. Like, I never felt like that true, authentic connection to my environment and to the people I live. And that's probably why I left at such a young age. But, you know, I, I had to go on my own journey and experience, like, different cultures and different environments to feel into what, where I belong because I think that's been a big thing for me is like where do I belong and and how can mm. I share that and I think once we feel that belonging that potential starts to unravel and it's a process but I do feel the belonging piece and the community aspect that we have here and you know it's really like shaped it really shapes you and and, and just unlocks this um creative potential that we all have inside of us it's just we're not in the mm. right environment we're not in that same yeah, that's that's so beautiful sorry to interrupt you because like it did uh, bring something up for me that I was writing about this morning um, is so what people fear when setting boundaries is, is that um, people will have an opinion people maybe reject them or even leave them and they will end up alone but as soon as we start honoring our values and start expressing our boundaries yes that circle will first become smaller but it will become richer. Mm. And if you are in a circle and whatever circle, whatever that may look like, wherever you are, that, that denies your authenticity, that suppresses your authenticity, that has a massive effect. That's like a, a vicious cycle where you, where you are in, where if you constantly have to sacrifice on something in order to be liked and accepted, like you disempower yourself. Mm. but we if we operate from that place our focus is on quantity so it's like oh i just need as many as possible people to like and accept me but when we do it the other way around when we go for the quality and we create a circle that encourages our authenticity that's where we find our true power that's when we start create can start creating and that's where we become like extremely powerful and that is something for people to just be so aware of is, is that that process, it is a difficult process of, of seeing that certain people indeed do not accept you when you stand up for yourself, that certain people have an opinion or reject you the way you think. And it's super painful, I agree. But the next phase is creating that environment with people, inviting people in that do accept you, that do encourage you, that do celebrate you that that's where you just become unstoppable mm. yeah i seen that just in like the last like six months year like the the women that i have in my life are just so beautiful and we're all supporting each other and you know tagging each other on our businesses and i just love that and it definitely was a challenge for me because i i came from that place of scarcity and lack and it still comes up you know from time to time of like oh there's not enough people in the world you know and that comes like that fear of like comparison and you know and i and then you remind me you know you know like you always bring me back to that center piece of like there's enough you know for everyone mm -hmm. and the more that we can find that richness through deeper connection the more fulfilled we're going to be and and then we can actually help be you know helping ourselves and helping others and being of service to others and i really feel like that's kind of the journey that we're on that we're all on subconsciously is like how we can suffer less and find more meaning so we can share that with people you know as well so mm. that's something that yeah i really yeah, I, th I think it, i think it's just a shift from when we don't have that awareness of who we are what we need and, and what we desire is we become a product of our environment. We just get sucked up by the environment and we, we become the efforts of it. Yeah. And when we do invest time into exploring and understanding who we are, what we need, what we desire, then we can start creating because the more clarity we have, the easier it is to make decisions that are right for you. And also the harder it becomes to allow things and toler tolerate things that are not right for you. Like for me, what we just discussed, it's almost impossible to be, be part of something that that's not in alignment with, with what's important to me, because I know I'm creating suffering for myself. Mm. Yeah. You're so aware of that, that, that because most people aren't even aware that that's going to create suffering. Yeah. 
because they're so used to experiencing it. It's kind of like we are attracted to the suffering because it's familiar. And the stepping yeah. into the unknown is that uh, it's like we are s afraid of our own power, our own potential, because we. Well, it's, it's, it's like it's just deepening your understanding, like this value work that I do with my clients is so deep and profound. It's not just like a word. It's not just a definition. It's looking into the beliefs that are holding you back so that you understand your own coping patterns, your own weak spot, where that, that, that potentially um, get you out of alignment, but also understanding that when you do it, what are the consequences of it? Obviously in the immediate, in, in, right in that moment, you might get like something from it, but what are, the, what are the consequences when you sacrifice on something that's important? What's the long-term consequence? What is long-term consequences if I keep saying yes to this? Mm. What is the consequence if I keep tolerating a certain behavior? What is the consequence if I keep prioritizing performance over my growth of the business over my relationship? What is the consequence on my children? It's just that, that awareness that you know, okay, if I do this, it will lead to that. What's more important to me? Do, do I want to feel comfortable, safe and cool in the present moment or do I want to create a fulfilling life? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. And that is the Dharma journey part one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we've, we've got a session in about half an hour and I'm going to make us lunch. So I think we'll leave it there. And I would love for you to just connect. Um, I know you, this is a big topic for you and you're actually going to start offering a workshop in the coming future on the values, on the value system and, you know, help giving people a taste of like the work that you do in your 12 week program. So maybe mm -hmm. you can share, you know, a little bit about the values uh, workshop that's going to be coming up. Um, yeah, the workshop is called reclaiming authenticity. And I think we just, we just shared everything about it. I'm about like, what an amazing journey it is, but also what it takes. And um, in that workshop, I'll be sharing the fundamentals that I um, that I yeah, that I teach to my private clients in my twelve week program, mm -hmm. um, which is all about like creating awareness around those values, what they mean to you, exploring the the, the beliefs and patterns that are holding you back from living in alignment, and how you can start expressing them, how you can start setting boundaries, um, and to honor your values. Um, yeah, it's just um, a kind of uh, what do I um, what do I call it? Like a a quick start to to working with your values. Yeah, it's very it's very powerful. I definitely leave it that, and I know how much it's completely changed my life and my business, and I guess uh, deepened our love and our relationship. So yeah, this powerful powerful medicine that you're sharing that I'm so excited to support you with and. For anyone listening you know if you want to reach out to Jordan or I and you have any questions about this anything that we spoke about feel free to send us a message we'd love to see where something may have shifted for you or may you kind of opened you up to something you hadn't thought of before yeah more than welcome follow me on Instagram I share a lot around values people pleasing boundaries <laughs> um, and everything that you need to know in order to live in alignment with them um so yeah, give me a follow. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you for listening. Brian, thanks for the invitation. Thank I'm you excited so for the next podcast. Yes, me too. Sending you so much love and I'll see you in two minutes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bye, thanks. Guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to connect with us, my Instagram is at Briar Roots, at the Dharma Journey please feel free to send us um, your favorite episode and we'd love to hear your feedback. If you want to reach and connect with me further, I offer weekly women's circles every Sunday. Also Ayurvedic healing programs, consultations. So all of my details are at the bottom. Thank you so much for listening. This is really a part of the Dharma journey movement to bring us closer together, connection, community, collaboration, and really inspire one another on our path towards liberation. Thank you so much for listening. Have an incredible day. I hope.